<clears throat> the thing that Mutosi was doing, Mutosi happened to like a gentleman by the name of Choki Motobu. Motobu was called Saruaji, which means monkey king. Mutosi was Hokien, which means monkey. And anybody ever met him would always say that he always walked in a slouch posture. He always rotated his head. He had some big ears, man. And uh, there's a gentleman here right now that uh, met him. I'd like to get him up right now. Come in here real quick. They're not going to catch him. Love him to death. This is Mr. David Coburn, you guys. And David is was a gentleman that met me, Tosi. So I'm going to ask him a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Yeah, that's great. And when he met Matosi, now you got to remember too, David was not a uh, old man like he is now, <laughs> right? That's right. He was he was a young pup. Would you explain to them what you thought of when you first met Matosi? So I had the privilege of probably meeting him, uh, seeing him at, at Folsom, and then Vacaville probably some probably eight to ten times. About half those times with you and with Arnold Golub, and I went by myself two or three times. And uh, it was really interesting. I, the best way I could describe him is a cross between Mr. Miyagi and Yoda. Yoda. And uh, uh, he, he, like you said, he had a kind of a hunch to him. Uh, uh, and uh, he, his English, he understood well, but he kind of spoke in broken English. And sometimes you know if he was doing that uh, just to mess with you or, 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 or what. Uh, but the, the, one of the things that I remember was that the lesson that he would always give me, would, I would come, listen, I was 19 years old at the time. And I would come with all these really important questions uh, when I would like go visit him by myself, like what's more important, a front kick or a side kick, or how do you throw a punch like this? Or like, you know, just really stupid questions that you ask when you're 19 years old. And he would patiently answer them. And then he would talk about, but Dave, you know, what's most important. Then he would talk about true self-defense. You know, that, that would be the thing that he would refer to. I, I remember one particular incident because we used to be in a room with picnic tables. So it wasn't behind a glass wall. You were actually in the same room with him where he actually worked on push pull with me. He grabbed, and I remember going, oh, you know, because the, uh, the guards were kind of, uh, you know, kind of there. Uh, he was going to grab and throw me around a little bit. He also uh, taught me, taught Suksen, which is, of course, you know, the rolling of the toes, and he talked about how uh, important that was for a front kick. And it was really interesting later on, uh, you know, doing, doing some Okinawan karate to, to learn a little more background about it. So he was really an amazing gentleman, and, and uh uh, it was a real honor to be. I, I, I kind of knew at the time this was something special that I'd be able to refer to later on, but I really didn't understand the significance. So I appreciate you bringing me along that those times that you did and him making the introduction. Do you, David, do you have any funny stories to, to tell about some things he did? Because there's a couple of things he did with you, and that just made me laugh. Uh, yeah, yeah, with specifically with Matosi. Yeah. Uh, so he, he used to go. Uh, He'd ask me a question that I would I would not fully. He goes, "Why do you do the so and so?" And whatever I would say, I would come up well because, and I didn't fully understand. I give the best answer he would I could, and he would go, "No!" And he'd kind of spit in my face as he would, he would talk. I, you know, he would kind of give an answer, and you know, he'd take a breath and and uh, and then patiently kind of come up with an answer. And I remember that that he was always so gracious that like like sometimes he didn't want visitors. At least he didn't want me. Maybe he wanted you to visit. But what's this 19-year-old kid want again? And he would uh, – <laughs> but he was – once I got there, he was always super patient with me and, uh, and, and appreciative of the visit. Yeah. yeah. So David, uh, <clears throat> David, as you know, and I, I'll explain to him. I, I'm sure he does because I'll tell you something, and, and I will not doubt this one bit. Everything that David ever learned from me, he still knows. The guy is uh, he's a, he's a regular bank of martial arts. And he did the reason, he's a great, great student of the arts first. And that's why he's a great teacher. And those of you that do work with Mr. Kovar understand he knows a lot more than what you might give him credit for. So you want to, uh, and also you want to cherish and ask him questions about various different people he's known in the martial arts. He's known a lot of people. He was fighting people all the time and, uh, he was a great champion. David, you told me a story about you and I. I got lots of stories about you, sir. Oh, shh. <laughs> you, you told me a story about uh, you and I doing kumite after you won a tournament. Yeah, yeah. So I was about, uh, it was like at the time, I would have been like 21, 22 years old. And I was, as you remember, I was winning all the tournaments in the area at the time and traveling a lot. And I was pretty full of myself. And I remember you asked me to spar one day. And that would have, because you're 10 years older than me, so that would have made you in your early 30s. And I remember thinking, you're just an old man, right? <laughs> and I remember you wanted to get together, okay. And I remember thinking, I'm going to take it easy on him. You know, he's getting old. <laughs> and I train all the time, you know. And, and you know, uh, and and so, you know, I, I went down and, and you just beat the crap out of me. But the thing that 
was the most humiliating was the fact that we trained, we sparred for about an hour. And I was at the time training all the time. I was in great shape. I was fighting all the guys and you weren't even breathing hard. And I was like sucking wind after five minutes. And I think the key thing that you've always been able to do is really understand how to really like the concept of body wisdom It's maximum results with minimum efforts. I think that's something that, that you just inherently, uh, have understood all along, you know, way beyond like, like the stuff that I just saw you do. And I'm like, you know, it's mind boggling to me every time I see you move and, and it, it, but see what it is. I think that you don't appreciate your ability to understand that most people have to drill it a lot more. It doesn't come as natural to, 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 to other people. It's like, if it, it, you just have this, and, it, and the other thing about, I remember one time learning spear sets you get a spear set mm-hmm. years oh, yeah. Yeah. and I knew that you, I learned it from you and, and rare Aquila. And, and I, I knew you hadn't practiced it and uh, for years. And, and this was about 10 years later. And I, I was trying to remember it. And, and, uh, and I showed up at your school one day and, uh, and I was asking you, hey, can you help? And you freaking just, just rattled it off. Like, and I know you hadn't done it for 10 years. So you've also had the ability to really uh, see and understand stuff at a, at a level that most people don't. Yeah, you know, and here's the thing for all of you that are watching this. <clears throat> Never take anything you do in the martial arts for granted. Also, there is no end to this. Therefore, you can't quit. You have to always keep going. No matter how bad you get physically or whatever, you still got growth. This guy here, he's a monster. He's a monster, but he's very polite. So those of you that work with Mr. Kovar, don't just ask him about the reasons you sent him out for do a seminar. Sit down and talk to him and ask him about his experiences. Some of the people he's fought, fought some top name, name people. And um, you know the story I always have, David? I lost to most of them. No, you didn't. No. You, you know the story? I, I don't remember this, David, but you were starting to have trouble in your, your tournaments and your, you know, your fighting. He said, I don't know why I'm losing. I said, David, they're used to you. Change your stance. Fight the other way. And you said, I'm not that good. I think you took first when you did that. That's because they're not used to it. you got to remember this. When you study and you start looking at the anatomy and the body and the way it moves, there's always something you're missing out on. And so, Mr. Kovar, I would like you, those of you that are practitioners, take part in the things he does, listen to him, but ask the right questions, not just questions about how to pick up your, your income in your dojo, but why don't you pick up and learn from him as far as the amount of things he knows. I'm going to tell you something. This guy's a monster. He, he turned out to be a monster, and what a wonderful monster. I'm serious. Thank you, sir. I'm serious. Okay. All right. Thank you, thank you, sir. you got to get busy. Get out of here. <laughs> hey, learn that form, bud. Yes, sir. <laughs>